everybody and welcome to today's Barnes Takeout. Today we're going to go upstairs into the corner room number 17 and look at this teeny little picture right here, zoom in somewhat, entitled um, Light Focus, done prior to 1949 by a German artist who went by the name Vols. And you can see on this wall it's um, displayed well immediately next to this painting that Henri Matisse had done um, in the 1940s in Moss, and I do love this wonderful like tangerine color. Near another work by Bowles, um, a lot of other watercolors by um, by Chagall over here. We can see many by um, Albert Barnes's very good friend Charles Demuth. I particularly like this one of a woman in a punching bag, um, as well as other artists like say, um, Georges Rouen over here, and so many work, many little works on paper that we can see. And before we start to zoom in closer to light focus, I do want to pivot in this room 180 degrees to look at, this is the north wall, we'll look at the south wall. Here we go, because, um, let's go in more closely, two more works over here by Vols, but here we've got many done by the artist Paul Clay, like, here and here and here and here and here and here here. Um, and I think that's important because Clay was a major inspiration for Vols actually. And um, Vols, to give you a sense of who he was, called Clay like an angel recreating the wonders of the world in art, whereas he, um, Vols was a, a poor devil, he said. Okay, so with that said, let's, let's take a closer look at, at light focus. Here it is. Um, it's done in a style that we call um, art inf informel, meaning basically a post-war style of painting that's abstract but not geometric. It's got this kind of quivering central motif. Zoom in a teeny bit. Um, it's mostly gouache watercolor, but you can see there's pen. Um, ink pen, we've got some kind of scratching, some dabs, we can even see fingerprints from Lowell's like here, over here, up here. Um, it looks, the central motif looks almost like it's being compressed, but at the same time expanding, maybe kind of moving if we look at these lines here, or perhaps it's even almost like a flower on the stem. Um, and to me, it looks like it could be cosmic as much as it could be um, like almost something depicted on like an atomic or on, on an atomic level. And then you can also see, of course, the, um, the wove paper emerging through the canvas. And um, I mentioned a minute ago that it was done in the late 1940s. And down here we've got the name Vols in the year 1950, um, which seems like it would be very helpful, but it's not. But we know it's done prior to that because Barnes had purchased his set of um, Vols watercolors in, during a trip to Paris in 1949. And we know that on a basis of a letter that I'm going to read to you that he wrote to his friend and, um, and colleague named Nell Mullen at the Barnes. And so what he wrote, what Barnes wrote was, I didn't get any old masters, but I got a fine redon oil, um, one that you can today see in room 14, two early rural watercolors the ones that, um, one of which I showed you on, on the wall of 17, four clays, one oil by a new man, Van Helvelde, one by a Spanish woman, De Silva, six gouache watercolors by a German Vols living in Paris. The last three artists named are the, the last three artists named are the only new painters whose work I saw that are worthwhile, very modern, but good and individual. They help our collection. And I think this is just a wonderful statement from Dr. Barnes toward the very end of his life and collecting career, where he always is interested in what's modern, what's new, saying that he he thinks it's going to help his collection. Um, and and anyway, anyway, I just think that's kind of a fascinating glimpse into his mindset, into Barnes's mindset. So with this Vols, for a bit of perspective on it, um, one, one thing that, like I kind of mentioned, Vols was looking to were earlier images by Paul Clay, um, one of which was Clay's Twittering machine, 
painted back in the year 1922. And to decipher this a bit, we've got this kind of platform um, with this vertical element that's cranked that seems to operate these birds, which themselves seem to be alive. And so for Vols, um, what fascinated him was the kind of synthesis that clay got brought together between the mechanical and the organic. And maybe if we look back for a sec to light focus, we can see the, the kind of um, organic, but very abstracted energy that we're getting from it. And something else that um, that's important to engage with with Bowles, partly vis-a-vis -vis Clay, was his engagement with different intellectual trends. And what I'm showing right here is um, actually a, <laughs> a photograph taken in Paris of the existentialist philosophers Simone de Beaufort over here on the right um, and Jean-Paul Sartre sharing a cup of coffee at a cafe. I think this wonderful encapsulation of post-World War II French existentialist philosophy. Now, Sartre was somebody who, after World War II, um, was kind of a benefactor of Vols, even wrote about him. And so to an extent, the works of Vols have gotten to be associated with what Sartre said about him. And what Sartre was writing was essentially, here, let's go back to the Vols, that images like light focus showed this kind of existential like horror rejection of the quiddity or like thingness of the world and were a kind of revolt and for Vols's life at the point at that point it would I suppose in its way make it a certain amount of sense in as much as um Vols at the beginning of World War II had been um imprisoned in France because of his German citizenship um after that fell deep into alcoholism, a problem that was major by the time um, he knew Sartre and ended up basically leading to the end of his life prematurely in the year 1951. But we know from Vols himself, who wrote often, that the philosophies that did intrigue him were manifold. He was really interested in the fusion of art and music like Paul Clay. And so perhaps we can see a sort of, um, I don't know, almost stringed instrument like vibrancy to this. He was interested in Chinese mysticism and how images could, um, could promote that. He was interested in the ideas of Freud and how art might be able to manifest something interior. And he was also really interested in um, in the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche, which was not really nihilistic, but asked in a world that's kind of devoid of meaning, that's been kind of blasted apart, how do we make our own? And so in a lot of ways, I think that an image like light focus might, there's a torment to it for sure, um, both individually as well as culturally at the time this was painted in, in 48, 49, probably. On the other side, there's a kind of hope. And I think part of that can do with an individual engagement with the image. And there's one last thing I'd like to show, which is actually this um, early medieval manuscript, a carpet page that opens the Book of John from the Book of Kells. And I want to put forth the caveat that as to the best of my knowledge, Clay was, um, the Vols was not religious. I do not believe that he made specific reference in his own work to the art of the Middle Ages. And yet something that he wrote, um, let me find this quote for you. Um, Fools wrote that a tiny sheet of paper can contain the world. And I think that the kind of looking he was going for was something like this, where it um, begins the book of John. Here's, it spells a big I-N and then P, you might be able to see over here, the Latin is in principio erat verbum. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was about God and the word was light and in the world. And zooming in, um, you can see the way in which the word and the world wrap together in a way that you just have to 
immerse yourself in the transcendental and the abstract um, to see how it all does come together and that indeed a tiny sheet of paper can contain the world. And so I hope that you'll take a chance to see this work. Let's go back. This fascinating, I think very stimulating work by Vols when you come back to the Barnes Foundation and I look forward to seeing you there. And that's it for today's takeout and thanks so much for joining. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.